Hi, hello, this is Ana Dominguez, your language coach, and today I'm going to share with you one didactic unit for the syllabus design that you can design and you must design on your own with your own creativity uh, for uh, any course in secondary and baccalaureate in bilingual schools. I'm telling you this because this did didactic unit is the one that I have formulated. I did already uh, um, uh, teach this one in, in, in schools, uh, in first of ESO and also in second of ESO. But, uh, but the, I'm, I'm sharing this didactic unit because I know that some uh, teachers are a little bit lost with how this should be made. And I also had suffered <laughs> that at the beginning when I was trying to understand the new law and how to apply everything. So let's start with this. My didactic unit is shaped with the, with the formulation of a, a learning situation, which is something that we all teachers, we have been doing all our lives, but now we have these names. Um, so let's start with this, okay? Uh, by the way, every information, you can find it in my website and I will place the the link uh, below in the description of the of this video. So please, if you find my information useful, say you like it and share it with other people, and let's interact. Also, we can also comment and have some interview if you if you want uh, online. Not during this month because I'm obsessed with the civil exam, so I'm studying a lot these days. But maybe during summertime, it would be fantastic to have some chat with you if you are an te English teacher here in Spain or in any part of the globe. Any, anyway, I'm open to receive invitations. So let's start with this. Um, as you can see, this is the front page. Uh, the at least in the uh, in the uh, accreditation this is for this I, as i told you i was preparing this just in case they were going to call me to to the oral exam in the in the accreditation i unfortunately think i can't because I, these days i'm teaching in a private school not in a semi-stated school so that's why i can i can't apply and i have to say please let's change that rule because it's absurd i think the private teachers teaching in Spain, we should apply for these kind of things as well. But anyway, um, I have already taught in semi-stated schools, but in that moment, I, I forgot to apply for the accreditation. Ah, and another important detail, the accreditation can be obtained as well uh, during the whole academic year. If you have the contract with any semi-stated school and you are an English teacher, you can obtain it directly if you obviously uh, have the the list the rest of the requisites which are usually the studies and and the diplomas and degrees and all those things my case for example is i am a philologist specialized in teaching la uh, spanish but also english um, as, a, as a foreign language uh, here in spain um, and I've, I've got post grades and everything. And I, I've also got many, a lot of uh, experience teaching at all levels, even, even at university. But I, I really enjoyed uh, also my, and I still enjoy a lot my private les lessons online. I, that's what I basically do. I train people to pass official exams, first advanced proficiency, these kind of things. But in the educational system, uh, I, also have experience and these are the things that I, I find it very inspiring and I love the sense of being in a community working with other teachers so I although I love teaching on my own I obviously prefer having a community around me anyway let's continue with this uh, this is the front page and it's as very simple as you can see didactic unit regularity in irregularity by the way this is my creation this is my um, design you could do something much better and improve um, you know all the content and also be more original and you must be original so don't copy me it's a waste of time if you work, if you copy me just have in mind what I am showing you to do something at least similar in, in terms of 
um, passing the exam, the civil exam, but also the, the, the accreditation exam, if you are lucky and you are going to present these days the didactic unit for this exam. Uh, it's an oral exam, should last less than 20 minutes, so around 15 minutes you have. So let's start with this. And, and remember, this is just one of the didactic unit that should appear in a curriculum that are usually 15, at least in the civil exam is what they are asking us. Um, this is the index that, by the way, front page and index don't enter in the 15 pages that they ask you to write maximum. Objectives, these students are initiating a new cycle in their studies. So in the objectives, this is what I say. So my intentions with this learning situation is to welcome them, to welcome the students and review the regular and irregular verbs and understand them and memorize them under a new light with phonetics and search of patterns hidden in them. My intention is to widen their vision. The teams made in class may serve us for the rest of the year and may serve also others, uh, other teachers. And, and, the, and, and the tutor. This would help to observe and understand the dynamics between them and with their teachers. Remember, it's a bridge. Uh, uh, first of ESO, no? this is the rest are passing from primary to secondary. So I my, my intention is to do this. You will see later in the timing to place this didactic unit after probably the first uh, di diagnostic test that we usually do at the beginning. If not, you could use this didactic unit as a, a di diagnostic. My experience teaching irregular verbs to children and adults is that the student, um, students unfortunately have only learned them in alphabetic order. And I believe that there is a better stimulating way to do it. And I'm not saying that memorizing just by heart or by alphabetic order is bad, but I think that our brain really uh, is, is faster and, and prefers uh, finding patterns. And that's why I'm teaching in this way the irregular verbs. I like teaching them with the technique of patterns, which is something I happily discovered myself after having to explain them for the umpteenth time, which is something that is like saying por la enésima vez. Although I later knew there were studies about it, I'm happy with the way I explain them and it serves us all. And I, I'm going to explain why it serves us all. It serves us all because when we are um, studying the irregular verbs in this way, we incorporate the learning better it, we connect with the sound and with the with the hang right, handwriting of the verbs, and although it seems more slowly at the end, the knowledge that they are acquiring is is more fixed and it works better in long term. Um, so I keep reading. They will associate patterns with colors to spot the differences and complexity in words. And they will work individually and as a team for a concrete purpose. So there is a purpose here to build a board game box. A board game is common juego de mesa, no? A board game box with instructions. Three of these boxes will be donated to the library. They will receive a lecture about phonetics, finding patterns in the irregular verbs, in the endings in regular verbs, and how to write instructions, advertisement, and a public speech. So this is summarizing what we are going to do during this um, didactic unit and the purpose. They will practice phonetic transcriptions and spelling through English lettering, record an advertisement, and memorize a public speech. So if we do this very well, uh, uh, these people, these uh, students for, from a bilingual school, I have to mention here, they are they are already using English to learn other subjects. So they probably already know very well the regular verbs. So as you can see, my intention is to show them another way to contemplate the beauty of language and how um, how we can memorize words better and, and understand better the phonetics. 
if possible, I always like doing this learning situation in collaboration with the teacher from art and craft or even the music teacher as a cross curricular project. And this is interesting. I every time I have worked in a school, I have always tried to connect with other teachers in this way. Uh, and some of the um, some of the ideas that I am carrying with me is because I had I I, I was very lucky and I had a fantastic, uh, I had fantastic teachers at the school, uh, myself in, in secondary and baccalaureate, also at university, but I remember I, my teachers from school and they were having this kind of connect, con connections and synergies. And if I have to say something here, with a noble oficio de la educación de Jaime Boigas, I think this will help you a lot as a teacher to understand our educational system and the, the, the needs and the, and the problems that we are facing as teachers. Let's continue with these uh, contents and competences to be developed in this uh, unit. I'm going to read this. This didactic unit has been written at the light of the syllabus design uh, for bilingual education described in the decree on the 24th of August, 2018. And I highlighted this because remember teachers, we need to say and support our, our um, documents with these uh, royal decrees or decrees. In this case, it's a decree. Uh, and I am following the specific contents and competences for a group of first official. And remember this decree is from the community of Madrid. Content in order of use in class. Phonetic chart, transcription of irregular verb and regular verb. Eight patterns of the irregular verbs. So I'm, I will explain how to find the patterns and everything. 15 minutes uh, lecture plus a video tutorial that I did and they have my video on my website. You can also find it. AD endings, 15 minutes lecture short so the, there will be a 15 minute lecture someday of the ed ending as well review the sound because this is something that is still in pets and first levels which is usually the level that they are having these 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 pupils um, uh, they are still having problems with the ed ending type of text and communicative intention example of type type text types so we have informative, writing to explain or inform, instructions and video tutorial. And persuasive, put forward a point of view and persuade. We will be working on, adver on an advertisement and also on a speech, on a public speech that they will give the day that they donate the uh, one of the boxes or three of the boxes from the class. Let's continue. Well, in the specific com competences and descriptors, I have taken this, remember this, with the decree that I have already told you. Um, and also you can find this information uh, in, in part of the information on this other, other Royal Decree 2017-2022 of 28th, uh, 29th sorry, of March. Uh, this one, it's where it appears the descriptors, descriptors from Lom Loe. OK, um, I'm just going to tell you this because the specific com competences and descriptors, you can find them in, in the in the law already. And it's, I think it, it's not necessary that I read everything. I think the most important part to be read here was what I have already read, told you, which is this part. Specific competences and descriptors. One part is about comprehension of oral text. And there I wrote, wrote the specific competences and the descriptors. Then you have the comprehension of written text and the descriptors. Here you have the competences and here you have the descriptors. Production of written text, exactly the same. You have the, the, the competences and the descriptors. Then a specific linguistic contents. I'm going to read this out loud. It says grammar and language functions, linguistic functions, in an intermediate level, describe, explain, define, summarize, justify, give opinion, ask, ask opinion, ask information, persuade. So all these kind of things are the functions of the language that they will be using 
during, during these two weeks uh, of, the, of these didactic units. Let's continue. Grammatical elements, use of verbs, including models in times of past, simple past, past continuous, present perfect, passive voice, and second conditional was, were. You might say, but this is a lot. Well, this is just glimpses of uh, showing them that if you they learn very well the regular verbs, they are learning what we call the past and past participle. participle. The regular verbs is about the ed endings, how to pronounce the ed endings. And the, in the regular verbs, it's about the spelling and the pronunciation of all of them and how to conjugate the verbs, we could say. Lexicon, use of common expression, fixed phrases and vocabulary about general and personal interest and about the contents of the syllables. Phonetics, recognition and production of basic rhythmic patterns, intonation and stress of words and sentences. Correct pronunciation of English basic phonemes. Correct pronunciation of the ending in the past simple. Progressive recognition of the phonetic symbols. And here, activities duration and sequencing. This didactic unit is considered a bridge between primary to secondary. Therefore, this unit will be better performed during the first weeks of the academic year in September, October after a first level test or as a first diagnostic. I, this is what I said at the beginning. Um, on the third day, building the box and the English lettering, it would be good to have the art and craft teachers collaboration and space. And if, if, if it can't be the art and craft teacher, you could choose also the music teacher. The duration can vary from five days maximum to seven, depending on the needs of the group and on how deeply the teachers want to enter in every content. In my experience, two weeks is the ideal time, having in mind that there are three hours of English per week and some other hour we can use in the arts and craft class. So let's say that we take just one hour from art and craft class, and then if this happens, everything could be completed in two, in two weeks. And this is the planning. Didactic unit, the regularity in the regularity or regularity in irregularity. You could say both, and it's up to you. Uh, I think I prefer regularity in irregularity. Um, but seven days, activities in class, motivation. First day is about motivating these kids to enter in this didactic unit. Um, so you are going to present a box, literally you bring a box that you have made or some other uh, students have made with you and present the box and tell them how good is, 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 is working on this project, okay? Um, um, and also, I also encourage people to talk about memory here and memorizing uh, the, and, and the differences between memorizing in alphabetic order and memorizing it with patterns. They have to experience it. It's not the same that they tell it, uh, they hear it as if they actually practice it. Video tutorial explaining the eight different patterns. This is the material for the first day. The list in alphabetic order versus learning the patterns. Send list to those who may need it. So special needs. This is always I tell you. Mm, if there is any kid that needs support uh, or any special uh, need and help from the teacher. I always have the list of these irregular verbs already made with the different colors um, that I share uh, to them so then they can work over that uh, sample that they have already from me. English lettering at home, this is the homework for the first day. English lettering at home with the irregular verbs grouped per patterns and colors. Each team divide the list so everyone works. And this is always something that I say that there is not about telling them all because they complain about having to write all the irregular verbs on their on the on the notebook or on the papers. So the intention is in English lettering on different pages, they they work and they organize with their teams if they are four or five students in each team they have to divide the list of irregular verbs and explore i'm going to explore the english lettering with these verbs writing them for example to drive drove driven conducir and then they do it on rows 
why is this important? They can't write something on the back because it's, we are going to cut them and we are going to use them individually to play with them later in the box. So they cannot be written on both sides of the, of the paper. And if possible, uh, encourage them to work uh, in a very neat, clear and elegant and beautiful way, okay, with the letters. Phonetics, the second day is about phonetics in the regular and regular verbs. I'll show the charts in class, explain the use of phonetic as alphabet, especially the monophthongs and diphthongs only because it's, it's a lot and phonetics requires a lot of time. That's why I show them at the beginning of the uh, academic year these charts. So then they have more time during this academic year to incorporate this knowledge and practice with, that, with, with it. Um, the good thing about learning phonetics is that this can serve for other languages and if possible in this moment in the phonetic in the second day that would be fantastic also to have the music teacher. Write the list of verbs, this is the, the homework, write the list of verbs with phonetic symbols, use word reference, artistic but legible. Um, yes, so the idea is, okay, I have already explained the phonetics with the vowels and, and the symbols and how exactly our tongue is placed in, in our mouth to produce that sound. And, um, and then later they have to take that list of verbs they have at home, maybe the same verbs that they were writing the, the previous day, and transcribe them into phonetics. They must use the word reference uh, app or website because it's very useful and they, it's very recognizable and, and they can even hear how those symbols sound, okay? Uh, third day, building and lining the box with the eight different colors. Teachers give the instructions to build it, if possible, in art and craft. So the third day is about having the art and craft classroom, if possible, with art and craft teacher. Um, they need the, the shoebox with the lid, color papers as explaining instructions and in the instructions that we have said out loud in class. The ones that I'm giving on paper are the instructions of how to play the game. And the instructions of how to build it, I'm giving them in class, out loud. What else? Um, so the homework is that, and, and the very important, in this third day, if there are three hours in, of English in any uh, bilingual school uh, in first of ESO, this means that if you start at the beginning of the, of the week, then what we have between the third day and the fourth day is a weekend, an entire weekend. So in this weekend, they can still practice in the English lettering, the transcriptions of the, of the verbs. They can also continue working as a team on the project of, of how to build the box and everything. So on the fourth day, which is, if we are lucky, it will be the second week, the fourth day, read and correct instructions of the game. So that instructions that you gave them, they have already read and completed because you will see later that there are gaps and you will correct that exercise on the fourth day. Um, and prove they have understood them by playing. So the fourth day is about playing with the box in class. And so they, when I say play, I say they are playing, but they are studying, studying with the, the with what they have built. Okay, their boxes and English lettering cut in rows. Uh, this hour is for playing and experimenting with what the regular box is about. Yes. Um, write a short speech for the don donation to the library that explains the benefits of playing with it and having the game at school. So they have ex received the motivation, the explanation of uh, phonetics, the explanation of how to build this, the instructions. They have played already in class. So the, the fourth day homework is now you write a short speech for the day of the donation, because in this, uh, in the fifth day, you will see now on the fifth day, uh, there are presentations. Each team has to present their box with the English lettering and everything. And 
they will be assessing the, the each team. How they are going to do this? With, an, uh, with a rubric, a rubric that I have designed and you will see later uh, in the appendix number three. So the material, the fifth day is boxes, lettering, presentations, and the, the rubric. What do they have to do on the fifth day as homework? To study the regular, irregular phonetics and the style of instructions and advertisements. This day as well, apart from the presentations, uh, they, this is happening, right? So that day you are giving, you are handing um, in a copy an advertisement. So the script of an advertisement. That is one option. Another option is to send them a, a video of, of, the, of, of an example of an advertisement short advertise. advertisements are usually short right so what they have to do is to 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 read or listen to that advertisement why because the sixth day i'm showing you now the six days is the test is the test is the test that if the teacher has to uh, correct something apart from any anything that happens with the box and the english lettering and so on it's this test because if we have to measure and give some kind of a score, um, the, the test it's going to tell us a lot of things about how the, they have been learning and if they have already memorized something of what they are doing. It says um, three fill gap activities and a writing exercise to choose between advertisements, advertisement of the instruction, and also to transcribe ten verbs. In, uh, in 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 the phonetic alphabet and you will see later the test because i have a, an example and that's the six days the six days is a test a test of what they have been learning um, read out loud your donation speech and send a recording to the teacher by email remember the donation speech that they gave on the fourth that you asked them to do on the fourth day you have already um, corrected somehow because they send it to you by mail um, so now they can record it and practice out loud why is this important because on the seventh day and that is the glorious day where they uh, they they are going to donate so the the, the celebration um, is a donation to the library so my intention is to celebrate it as a class achievement and the teams that get the three first places will donate the box to the library and give a short speech about why we are donating this game. So that's why we need that they practice the speech before. Um, who can give the speech? Well, they decide. The three teams that were the winner, um, they, uh, the first one, there are three positions. Well, the first, the one that, that, that win uh, the highest uh, score, that team will give the speech and and they can decide who 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 is going to give it in front of the of the of the, of other classes or in front of the uh, of the person that is working in the library i don't know um and that day the homework is play some of these days in the library with some peers and younger students. So the intention, my intention is that they actually really collaborate with this to the community and also play with the younger students or other peers, colleagues from other classes from the same level um, and make use of this donation in the, in, in the library. That's it, that's the, that's the plan. And now the material and the didactic resources, use of new technologies in the classroom. You can find here that I wrote their list of irregular verbs from their students' book. It's usually, it usually appears in alphabetic order at the end of the book and how we are going to transform that into a beautiful box and we are going to learn it with meaning, with, with a meaningful uh, approach. Phonetic shorts, uh, appendix one, you will see later, a shoebox and lid, bring sa sample to class or show some pictures, appendix two, color papers, red, yellow, orange, uh, pink, green, black, blue, and purple, and there is a meaning why we need those colors and not others, 
um, pro photocopies with the instructions, leave blanks for them to fill some information. You will see and understand everything that I'm saying later with the, with the appendixes or appendices. And the eight patterns shown in class, uh, also in appendix two. Papers, markers, scissors for, the, for their English lettering with the irregular verbs and their transcription. And a peer assessment, the, the rubric, appendix number three. The test, as I told you, the test, as I told you, it's uh, 10 questions of, your, of irregular verbs and regular verbs, one exercise with 10 verbs to transcribe into phonetic symbols, and one writing exercise that we call heteroevaluation because mm, this writing exercise and the rest of the exercise of the test is only going to be an, uh, assessed by the teachers, the, the English teacher in this case. And that's, that's the appendix four. An email to the teacher with a recording of the short speech about why we are donating this game. And this is also some part of the, um, of the, of something that we need to assess as well as teachers. Assessment criteria and procedures. English verb boxes with the English lettering and the phonetic transcription will be presented and assessed with self-evaluation, peer evaluation, and hetero evaluation from English and art and craft teachers or even music teachers. The continuing ev evaluation of this subject makes e uh, easy to introduce some topics in these early months of the course. For example, the phonetic charts that will accompany and serve them well in their acquisition of English or, or their English acquisition for the rest of their years of study. Why am I telling you this? Because as I told you, Phonetics is something that they, it's complex. I mean, they need, it requires time. It's like learning, I don't know, I'm going to give you just an example. It's like learning this, the, um, the symbols of the, um, of the zodiac. If you don't know them, you really need to practice. And especially if you have to link them later with the houses and with the, with the, the planets and, you know, so... It's something that requires time to get used to that and practice, practice, practice as everything else in life anyway. Assessment procedures, a, a rubric. The rubric that they are going to use have self-evaluation. So they are going to also make some comment about how they work as individuals. Co-evaluation, so they are going to evaluate each other as peers. It's a evaluation, teachers we are going to comment also on their work. And that has a total uh, a percentage of 20% 20 uh, 20 of the total score for this didactic unit. A test, either evaluation, appendix four, 40%. So obviously the test is the one that I'm giving more opportunities to get more points there because it requires them to study and and fix and memorize and and this is part um an email with a recording of the of the of the three minutes of speech it's a it's an it evaluation so it's at the teacher who is uh, assessing that is 20 percent and working class it's it has a 20 percent as well so I, that's balanced but obviously i have to give some something more weight and i believe that the test should have in this case more weight although i love also the the, the presentations and everything but I really if, if my experience is that uh, students appreciate also that you take serious their work of studying and performing an exam so that's why i think it's it's just it's it's, uh, it's fair for them it all seems for for them that i also take this in consideration um, then we have the criteria of evaluation in the comprehension of oral text they they have to identify the general meaning in instructions advertisements public speeches and video tutorial b in the production of oral text expression and interactions to maintain the rhythm in the speech with sufficient flow to make comprehensible the message when utterances are brief or media length, 
even when pauses, hesitations, or reformulation may happen. In the comprehension of written text, to identify the essential information, the most relevant points and key details in well-structured text, on, pa on paper or on digital devices, brief or media length, in informal, mixed or informal style, about daily affairs and topic of his hair interest or related with the studies with a common general and more specific lexicon. In the production of written text, expressions and interactions, an interaction, to write on paper or on a device brief or media length text coherently and with clear structure about topics of personal interest or about daily affairs in formal, mix or informal style making well use of connectors, spelling conventions and common punctuation rules, showing a reasonable control over fixed expressions, structures and vocabulary of most frequent use. Measurable, measurable and accessible standards and learning results in the comprehension of oral test. And this is about the, what we are actually assessing. What is the what do they really have to achieve here? Identify so he or she identifies as you can see now is the third person identifies the principal idea and relevant aspect of a video tutorial and movies when there there is a there is visual support that complements the discourse. B in the production of oral text expression and interaction his her pronunciation rhythm and intonation are adequate and do not interfere in the communication, shows capability to use an accent, esto quitarle un lado, ¿vale? An accent, intonation to add expression to the message. In the comprehension, comprehension of written text identifies relevant information in detail, instructions about the use of devices apps or games and about the realization of activities and elaborations of recipes and instructions. In the production of written text, expressions and interactions, writes simple text or narrative, descriptive or argumentative style about topic of self-interest or from the syllabus adapting himself or self to the different types of text, instru instructions, advertisement, public ceremony speech or, or the, the, the speech of donation, okay, that they are doing to the library. And last but not least, the uh, bibliography or webliography. And I have placed there two books are this one, the uh, English grammar in use, and the other one is the same, but with American um, um, approach. Why did I uh, wrote that? Because in these books, they, I mean, usually if they have, they if they have lack, if they lack in grammar, these are the best books in my opinion, for first of ESO, even second of ESO, and even third of ESO, because for PET and first students, which are more or less the level of these students, these books are fantastic and they fix really very well. And there is a page that explains the grammar, and the other on the other hand, on the other page, they have to complete the, the, and exercise what they have learned in, on the, about the theory. And that's why I love these ones. Um, and, and, and I place them there. I could have also placed this one, the other one that I'm going to show right now, that I talk already about this. This is the other one that I was telling before that is in Spanish. And it's very recent, a noble oficio de la educación, Jaime Boy Gastallón. Uh, he was a, a teacher of mine uh, when I was 16 years old. Uh, I met him I, in, in my school. We were rehearsing for um, a theater, but previously it was a, a chorus. Uh, we were in a, a, a singing for Christmas, I think it was. Um, and I highly recommend. I'm going to show you this book. And this is the book that I would also add here. It's not in English, it's in Spanish. And it's very recent. It's called El Noble Oficio de la Educación de Jaime Boigas. I have a post that I wrote about the book. You can check in on my website. And why uh, am I showing you this book? Because if you are a teacher you and you really want to understand the different 
stages of the of 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 Spanish education, this book is fantastic and also gives you and encourages you to see education as as a as a fantastic opportunity to be with others and work with others towards some kind of um ideal <laughs> and uh, that that nowadays is a little bit confusing uh, because we have a lot of uh, changes in the law and many things and this is explained also in this book so that's why i encourage you to read that book too uh, my website uh, and content i also put this the web geography mm. I wrote it because, you know, if I have to tell you, uh, obviously we need to read the royal decree, the decree and all of this, but we need to transform our knowledge and our practice into our own content. That's why I'm not really linking and saying other names, other linguistics uh, studies, or I'm just using what I am studying for my own um, teaching. Um, and I think that's why it's important that as a teacher, you have your own website and you create your own content and use it in class. Then students appreciate when you are being creative and when you show that there is a path of how to do things on your own, on your own scale. You know, you don't need always need to refer to others. You can also refer to your own uh, process of learning. And I think that teachers, what we basically do is we learn because we teach and, and we teach because we love what we are studying. And that's something that we, we transmit. Anyway, this is the end uh, of the, the bibliography. And now I'm going to show you the appendix. Um, this is the appendix, um, appendix one. I'm not going to enter in the detail about this, but I will link the video where you can find more information about phonetics. That, that is not a video that I will show in this lesson, but I will explain this to the kids and how, how everything works with the vowels, the monophthongs and diphthongs. Then the ED endings, how we work with this. And then you have here the irregular verbs box, game, patterns, and in my website, you can understand also and read about the patterns, why we are placing different. You can see here the pictures of the students that did this uh, last year in December from the Colegio Loreto. Um, they did it. And it was there were many other boxes, but this this is one example. And so, as you can see, these 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 papers are the the regular verb box the, the regular verbs written with english lettering and cut in rows and then when they are taking it out from outside they read out loud and then they have to place in which uh, pattern goes i give you an example in the instructions they say instructions to play with the regular verbs box this game can and i gave them the blank because they have to think about what is what goes there what what is exactly what what answers goes there and the answer is this game can be played so be played individually or with more people if they don't know the answer just ask them to use their common sense and the context okay open the box in this case second take a paper with an irregular verb Conjugate the verb saying it out loud and write it down on your notebook. So that's how this is being played. It's not the instructions of how to build it. This is how to play with this once it's built. And the example is example given is to drive, drove, driven, meaning conducir. This is what they write. And then place the paper inside the right pattern or color, right? And this is blue. If you want to understand why is that blue, go to my video about the irregular verbs uh, that you have on my website. Repeat a few times until you have understood and learned very well the eight different patterns. But so that's the instructions. Then I'm showing you here the rubric, the rubric uh, that I give them the day that they are giving the presentations. And there are 
one, two, three, four, five different questions they have to complete. The first one is, did all the members work in the team? Yes, no comments. And this is the first team. Second question for the first team. Did they write, write the irregular verbs with English lettering and cut them in rows? Yes, no comment. Did someone solve any difficulty in your team? Tell me who and what he, she did. And yes, no comment. Did the team make and finish the box? How does it look like? Comments from the class and from the art and craft teacher, okay? Or even the music teacher, if, if, if you are doing it with him or her. Can they explain how to use the irregular bear box? Yes, no, and comment. That's it, that's the rubric. Obviously in my class, uh, there were six groups. In your class, maybe there are five or more, I don't know. Let's continue. The test, this is the appendix number, the last appendix, and is the, the, the test that I told you. You can find it also on the website. And that's it, I don't want to extend more this video. Um, remember these 15 pages, uh, you need to send them uh, the day for the accreditation. So for the, if you are being uh, called to perform the, the oral test for the accreditation, remember that this is, this is, the, this is the, 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 the written part that you have to do. And then later you have to defend this didactic unit in front of the tribunal. Or how long? Within 15 minutes, I think they give you. As you can see, I have spent almost an hour giving you my explanations um, but I'm sure there are many things that I, I could I could have omitted anyway I hope that this has been helpful I really encourage you to read the book that I told you work in a very creative way with others and and, and create your own content this is the best thing you could do for your own uh, uh, work as a teacher and also uh, to, to get inspirations as well, because we need to get inspired and, and get in contact with others to be better, better in our work. And kids appreciate a lot when you have a purpose, a clear purpose on what you are doing. That's it. I hope that this has been very helpful. I'll see you soon. A lot of kisses. Bye.